Hi guys, this is tabletnews.com and I'm here with the Nook tablet in a 16GB version. This is a rival for the Amazon Kindle Fire, it's made by Barnes & Noble. It's got an e-reader like format that you may be familiar with since if you saw the Nook color last year, well, pretty much the same device. Um, I have to say that the 8GB version of the Nook tablet costs $200 and the 16GB version costs $250. The design involves this little hanger right here. It has become a popular design option. I saw one, I saw actually two on the PlayStation Vita and I saw one on the Xperia Active Phone. There's also this cute home button with this uh, pretty logo. If I'm not mistaken, it's the one of Barnes & Noble. Hope I'm not mistaken. At the bottom we have a micro USB port. At the back, once again, the logo, a speaker and very nicely hidden right here the micro SD card slot, a very clever idea. Other than that, at the top side we have the audio jack and a microphone to record stuff for your kids, for interactive stories. Well, this device measures 12 millimeters in thickness, so it's a pretty thick device. It weighs 399 grams, so it's quite heavy. It's got no camera, it's got a micro SD card slot, which is an advantage over the Amazon Kindle Fire. Its battery should provide around 11.5 hours of reading time and about 9 hours of video. We got Wi-Fi, we got a 7 inch display with 1024 over 600 pixel resolution. There's also, um, as you can see I'm toying around the interface. There's also 1 gigabyte of RAM. The screen uses Vivid View technology so it uh, handles uh, daylight very well. If you want to read a book in plain daylight you should go for it. This is the successor to the Nook Color it has pretty much uh, similar design to the new color. The back is a soft touch surface, very nice to handle. And uh, we have wide viewing angles, which is always very good when watching videos or reading books. Good contrast, that nice micro USB port that's also used for charging, not only transfer from the PC. Um, you already saw the 3.5mm audio jack. This interface is actually gingerbread. Android 2.3 with a custom interface. It's as custom as the one on the Amazon Kindle Fire, but this time it focuses on the Barnes & Noble services. We have a dual-core Texas Instrument CPU inside, 1 GHz unit, and this little home button, if you press it once, it will trigger these options, Home, Library, Shop, Search, Apps, Web and Settings, and if you press it twice, so let's pretend that you're in the movie section, press it twice and it's uh, back to the home area so press the button, home button twice and you're back to the home screen other stuff to see, well let's have a look at the virtual keyboard so now I'm in the web browser this is the virtual keyboard, it's actually pretty comfortable both in portrait and landscape mode so let's try to load our website, see what happens tablet news We've also installed the Maxton browser. Here's tabletnews.com. It loaded pretty fast. It may not be the best browser in the world, but I guess it will have to do. Some options right here, like new window, bookmarks, windows, refresh, and some more options like adding bookmark, find on page, download, and settings. This is the browser settings area like enable JavaScript, text size and other stuff like that. So web browsing, the web browsing is taken care of. Now let's see what else. The interface is pretty simplistic. You can see that we have three home pages right here. We have no widgets. We simply have a list of recently accessed um, books, apps and whatever at the bottom. Remember that carousel from Kindle Fire? Well, we also have sort of a carousel here but instead it's a horizontally scrolling list of things that you recently accessed. And I can take these icons and make them bigger if I want to. So, like this, there are resizable icons, which is pretty cool, but remember, no widgets whatsoever. And since this device is focused on e-reading, I can get back to the book I was reading through two methods. One, pressing right here, and back to the book, now back to home, and second, pressing right here, once again back to the book. So it's all about the e-reading experience. 
And there's also a main dock section at the bottom with books, newsstand, movies, music and apps. There's also this area right here that holds notifications. So if my uh, Wi-Fi connection were to disconnect right now, it would be written here in the notifications area. That lets me know I have an SD card inserted at the moment. Here we have um, settings area. So you can see the battery level, Wi-Fi, mute, brightness and a couple more settings. Those were the quick settings and these are the detailed settings. So if you press this area you'll see the quick settings of the device and these ones are the larger settings. Now it's time for some multimedia playback starting with the music. Let's use the music player on this device and let's try to listen to some Katy Perry. Let's see what other options we have here. We have a now playing, we have a search. Um, I really miss a back button right now, honestly speaking. Okay, so I'm in the apps area, once again in the music player. I'm trying to see if there's any uh, equalizer whatsoever. I can see the cover. Nope, doesn't seem to find one. Now let's get to the video playback, since this tablet can do that too. Uh, now it's reading the content of my SD card. I have a ton of stuff on it. I can divide it by books, magazines, newspaper, apps, kids and much stuff. So for now let's try to watch a trailer for the movie Warrior. It's a movie about boxing or better said the uh, mixed martial arts. Now let's see some action. Okay, enough with this movie. You saw the video playback, you saw the audio playback. I would have shown you the camera if it was available on this device. Now it's time to see the email section. We have a special email app. I synced it with my uh, Yahoo account. There is a there is the folder section on this device. There is also an account section, so I can sync even more accounts. I can add an account. I can send an email. It will be written sent from my Nook. This is the virtual keyboard and the email experience is fairly basic. So I have this default account. It's letting me know I have logged in on Facebook. Right now I can search for mail right here. And that's about it when it comes to email experience. Let's see what else we have. We have this books section. When you enter the books section you will see both the books that you have stored and a recommendation of books you can download. So let's enter one of them. I only have some samples. There were some errors when downloading stuff. And now it's time to see the options of the book reading experience. We have content, find, share, text, brightness and discover. On the content area I can see title page, page of um, table of contents, notes and highlights and bookmarks. On the find section, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can enter words or phrases. There is also the option of sharing, like recommending, posting reading status, rate and review, like on Facebook, and a ton of text options, as expected from an e-reader slash tablet, changing their size, changing reading for the night and day experience, to better suit the lighting around you, changing the font, line spacing, margins, whatever, also changing the brightness to a decent level, and there's a feature called Discovered, you can discover more uh, books by the same author. So the e-reading experience is simply great, as expected from this device. Well, that was the book section. Now let's go to the newsstand. And I have here a collection of recommended uh, 
magazines and newspapers and a free copy the magazine sample that you can see right here you can zoom in quality pictures inside these magazines as you can see there's also the article view that allows me to simply see the text and not that magazine format which is a cool feature I also have this pages option so I can uh, flick through the pages of the magazine also a content option it looks very nice so it's a pleasure to read books like this once again in the home area and we're done with newspapers we're done with books so a movie now let's see the apps once again it shows me the apps I have installed and the recommended apps let's go to the app shop from Barnes & Noble sadly I cannot install third-party apps which I'm very sorry but I can see what they have available right here in my country they don't have them available it gives an error with my credit card and my location but you'll be able to buy all sorts of stuff from Angry Birds to Pac-Man to every app you can dream of there are games apps for productivity, teams, health, social and whatnot. So best of luck if you try to download them. Now let's see what else we have on this device. So I have installed a bunch of apps and now I'm going to show you my full library to give you an idea of what the apps look like on this device. I'm going to begin with Twitter. The Twitter experience is fairly basic. I can compare it to the one on the tablets and Android smartphones. Here's the main feed of what people are saying. There's this area with people replying to what I say. There's also the discover area with hashtags and stuff that's popular right now. There's a me area with my account. Of course there's a settings area. Uh, you must have noticed that uh, when you're inside an app there are options available right here like this little back button right here and once again inside the app this little menu right here typical for Android apps so let's get out of Twitter I also took the liberty of installing a WordPress app and this is the tablet news panel with new post, new page, quick photo, posts and pages so here is a list of articles that we've published recently it's a pretty cool way to manage your uh, WordPress blog. Now let's see what other apps I can show you. We also have a calculator. If you're into that, you need to do your taxes and whatnot. There is also a chess app. I can only install the apps that were allowed to install using my account, my limited account. We also have Crossword, there's Friendcaster right here, we have installed the Maxstone web browser, Flickster, Net Netflix came pre-installed, we have Pandora, uh, Nook Friends, Seismic, but you'll see that later. Now let's look into Nook Friends. Having a hard time loading. In Nook Friends you'll see what your friends have been doing lately, what they read and what they bought and what they're talking about seems that many of them are reading Fight Club there's an about me section and it's nice to see what your friends are buying and doing right now there's also a friends list a pending list and let's leave this area and see what apps I recently used among them there's a Seismic a client for Twitter and Facebook I have uh, synced it with my Facebook account and this is Facebook that you see right here through Seismic this is the list of friends it's loading right now this is it a list of pages let's enter one of them pages of artist Alice in Chains for example it looks pretty basic I don't quite like this layout and here's my wall For some reason or another, this screen, based on VVView technology, is making some strange effects when being filmed by the camera. I guess you can see them as well, but strange things can happen. 
on this device. Okay, now let's try to find a book that you can read with your kids. This one is the Elephant Child. You can uh, either have it read to your kids or record your voice for the kids or let them read by you themselves. So, let's try to read to the kids. There are some previews here. You can skip to another page. Okay, that was the reading experience for children. One thing I forgot to mention that I came across earlier are the buttons. Here are the volume button, plus and minus, and the on-off button right here. They're very well built in the device. So you may have, may have a hard time pressing them and you'll maybe press them by mistake. Okay guys, this is tabletnews.com, this is the Nook tablet, hope you like the full review of this device. There is also a contact section here that I've synced with my Facebook accounts and my Google contacts. And that's about it. It's a fairly good tablet, sadly in my area I cannot take advantage or better said full advantage of the many apps I can download. I prefer Amazon Kindle Fire over it. Some people already installed Android 4.0 on the Nook tablet. They rooted it, they hacked it, installed third party apps, but you know how it is with hacking. You may damage the device. Overall, I prefer the Kindle Fire, but if you're into e-reading and have $200 to spend, buy this tablet. It's well worth your time, especially because Barnes & Noble offers 2.5 million books, comics, magazines, and other stuff like that. So, it's a pretty good device. Okay, okay guys, this is it. Tabletnews.com gave you a review of the Nook tablet. Bye-bye.